Hey, what's going on guys? Hex coming up back in today with a brand new video and as always down the title below will be the topic we're talking about today So that is Ketsugeki Token Rambu. I'm always afraid I'm gonna mess that up, but I somehow don't So this episode actually gave us some information, you know, gave us some characterization on the characters And it made us ask some questions and, and it really made us think So one of the things we, you know, got off, you know, got basically right off the bat for this episode Was the fact that the retrograde army, you know, kind of like their subordinates per se They're not dumb, like they are entirely Intelligent. They're not just empty like zombie looking esque corpse, right? They actually know how to fight like they'll hide they'll ambush They'll do all these things and that's you know There's so many of them and so little of you know our token Rambu I think that's what they're called. I don't think they've told us what uh, te technically what they're called, right? But there's only so many protagonists compared to how many antagonists there are and that's obviously that's not good, right? That's clearly not good, especially since our main cast, some of them are inexperienced. Like, was it Kunihiro? And yes, I pronounced that right, thank God. But he he is someone who, this is his first mission, his first time out, first time, you know, going back in time, right? First time crossing over into a, a different t time loop, per se, timeline, right? So it, you really do see kind of like the threat level here. And to make matters like even worse, right, it's the fact that our our master, you know, well their master, not our master, but their master can only stay in this world for a certain amount of time. It, at least it's called like the temporal pressure, I think it was. He's like, I must go back due to the temporal pressure. And that's kind of like, is he, is he that strong? You know, it makes you it makes you ask that question. How strong is the master? You know, of all these other swords, it's just kind of like, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> maybe this is because of something else. But if it's due to him being so strong, because why didn't it happen to you know everyone else that was something there with them? So maybe it's because he's so strong that he will disrupt history if he's there for you know in a different timeline for too long. But another thing we actually did get about you know history in and of itself was something called as you have it written down here historical. Restraining force, yes, historical restraining force. Really, just want to make sure I nailed that. You know, nailed that right there. But historical, you know, re restraining force is basically if something small happens, right? I, they didn't dive too much into it, but this was the gist of it. If something small happens, it's okay. History will, it'll, you know, it will recover. It's all right. It will not go to hell in a handbasket, right? But nonetheless, if bigger things happen, like that steamship getting destroyed and stuff like that, of course that thing can lead to other things. And that's what really has me interested because it's like, whoa. So these, you know, these characters, these main protagonists who are, are materialized swords, right? It's almost impossible to know what the retrograde army could be going after, right? Because there's a lot more. Th it's way it's way easier going to destroy something than it is to protect something. But at the same time, you got to put in perspective that I mean, whenever they're going to to destroy something, it's like, whoa, what are they going to destroy? What could, I mean, the time, the timing is everything, right? Knowing what's going to happen early, since they do get that little alert that's saying, hey, they're going to appear in this time area, and they can go to that time area, right? Or they're going to, you know, appear in this place. Or this vicinity, I should say. I shouldn't say this place because that kind of narrows it down. But this, they'll be somewhere in the, like a certain amount of square miles, right? And you need to be there to stop them. But you're going, but yet you have to figure out what they're going to do on your own. I mean, you, you're not getting help. You have to find out what they're doing on their own. And that's something that's just kind of whoa. How in the hell? I mean, it'd be so hard to do that. And I'm, I love how you photo will show that. They showed that it's difficult to find out what you know what the retrograde army is going to attack next. And at the same time, it's it's almost impossible to be there. And that makes a lot of sense. You can't just be actually no, think what they're thinking, right? You have to add the, put the clues together and add them up. And I like that. I like the critical thinking in the show so far. Kats, you know, Katsugeki, and you know, not referring to leftovers, but so far it's probably my favorite show. I really like Katsugeki so far. Great show so far. But we also did get characterization with uh, was it Tober Tobo Nori? I think it was the one that is the big one with the staff and he's someone who's really relaxed and calm basically you know and he's laid back calm and kind of just sticks to the task and that's someone, who, someone that you want at your you know as your right hand man and of course we have the other guy with the gun which i can't remember his name but he is someone who's kind of reckless likes to eat likes likes to fight likes to sight see he sounds like you know sounds like the typical shonen character <laughs> to say the least, right? I would most definitely say he sounds like the typical shonen character. I, I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, but then we also got, was it Yagen, I think his name was? He was the smug, kind of like stuck up one. I, d I don't know why, but we do know, we did find out something that uh, is pretty interesting here is, you know, well, pretty interesting here, and I can't spit it out, guys. I'm sorry. I'm having problems today. Damn. Well, at least this is happening at the end of the video, so most people won't see it. If you saw it, leave a comment. We'll, we'll work something out. Don't tell. No, but in all seriousness now, um, something that was really cool was the swords do have the characteristics of their owners of their past owners they think like them and they kind of feel like them right and we saw that whenever they're looking at the steamship and how one, the guy with the gun wanted to get on that boat and visit the world and we also find out that they actually view each other as objects and obviously they're not objects anymore they're people they are people now so that's gonna be something i think is gonna be cool because maybe they'll use each other as sacrificial lambs like He's just an object. He's just fulfilling his duty. And, I mean, that's kind of how Connie, I guess, looked at it. He's like, he kind of looked at other people. I'm doing my job. Who cares about anyone else? As long as the people I'm supposed to protect don't die, then who cares? And, you know, that may be something that has something, you know, something to play a role in later on down the road. But, as always, guys, you guys have been Hex. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow Twitter, X25. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys.